let me start by saying that when you were a little girl, you went to a school that had mostly hearing kids in it, and maybe about 400 hearing kids and about maybe less than 20 deaf kids. Most of the deaf kids were in the preschool program, and then there were like a few deaf kids in each grade. As I remember it, you had two deaf girls in kindergarten, first, second grade, and then one of those girls moved away, and the other girl was in your class, you know, for the rest of elementary school. So most of your opportunities to have friends were with hearing kids, right? Right. So could you kind of go take us back in time and when you were a real little girl in preschool and first and second grade, you were real focused on happy to be at school, happy to be learning. Social Socialization was not such a big deal. Didn't matter. Didn't really, really matter. Um, you were included in all the birthday parties because every girl in the class got to go to everyone's party, that kind of thing. Uh, the the girls weren't really having sleepovers yet. But starting around third, fourth, fifth grade, thing, things really changed. Can you like talk about that a little bit for them? Yeah, because when you're third grade, and I look at stuff to talk about things like, he has two of these, you know, they start talking about these in school. Yeah, I could relate to that because I was with a lot of people, so I couldn't be that out. So I had a good time being with them, and I feel like I'm going to develop a really good version with them outside of school. But on the weekends, I used to call them up and say to some of my friends, and say, would you like to come over to my house and play, you know, have fun, thinking that they were my good advice. Thinking they were your good friends. Yeah. Right. And then, um, but then, I started to realize that they were giving me some kind of excuses like, um, I'm too busy, or my parents said no, or um, it's too far for me to go. Even kids in the neighborhood, right? Right, only a block away from Always me. busy. Right. And I started to get the feeling that no one wants to be friends with me outside of school. And then I started to realize I am different because I'm a hearing and they didn't want to socialize with deaf people because some people can stay in your house dog because you always got attention. Or, right, I think getting attention was a part of it and I think the communication thing. Not so much that they thought you were dumb but that it was hard to communicate and your grammar was not perfect, your speech was not just as developing. good. Yeah, just developing and it was harder to explain things to you. It took a little more effort and a lot of kids just didn't have that ability or that willingness right. to develop, develop a friendship with you. Right. And if you could give any advice to kids that age now that are feeling left out, I mean, what would you tell them? How can they deal with that? I was saying they pass and don't give up. So maybe you should try to find that confidence inside yourself. And so go out to your person that you are dying to talk to. To walk to that person and say, hey, I may be there, but I want to be friends with you. Hey, I need to get to know you. Maybe become better friends. Let you take the time to, to develop this. Yeah, we really, they they really need to find the confidence first to you no know, stay strong, stay in the whole ground, it should go up and say, Hey, I will be buzzed with you. Yeah, and I think that's helpful for parents to know because really for anyone having good self esteem is really a key to a lot of success in a lot of areas and this is just another one. So Parents can help kids to build their self-confidence and their self-esteem and, you know, kind of wait it out because, you know, as we're going to discuss, even in middle school, things don't really often get much better. 